everybody. Chapter 7 is called Due Diligence. In Chapter 6, <clears throat> Jesse passed out all the note cards for the trial that they're going to have for Scott. So everybody got a job. And at the end of the chapter, Evan was kind of upset because a lot of his friends kind of, um, he feels like, are turning his back, are turning their backs on him because they're going over to Scott's house to play his new Xbox. So we're on to chapter seven, which is called Due Diligence. Due Diligence. Taking the time and making the effort to do a reasonably good job at something. The opposite of negligence. So if you're doing due diligence, you're doing a good job on something. Take your time put, doing your best work. Can we take a break now, asked Megan, sitting up on her knees. She held the blue marker in her hand as if it were a lighted candle. Her fingers were covered with ink in all colors, and she had a pencil stuck through the base of her ponytail. Jessie was lying on her stomach with her whole box of colored pencils spread out in front of her. There was no way they could take a break now. The trial was tomorrow. There was still so much left to do. She already interviewed the five witnesses who were going to testify, Paul, Ryan, Kevin, Malik, and Jack, to find out exactly what they remembered about the day the crime to find out exactly what they remembered about the day of the crime when they were at Jack's house. She'd written out index cards for David Kerkorian that told him exactly what he was supposed to say during the trial. When the trial begins, you bang your gavel and say, <clears throat> All rise, court is in session. The Honorable David P. Kerkorian presiding. If somebody talks who's not supposed to, you say, order in the court, order in the court. If you're not quiet, I will hold you in contempt. When you swear in a witness, you say, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Now, she was finishing up coloring the map that showed where each person would stand or sit during the trial, and she still had to write her closing argument. Jessie felt for the first time in her life as if she was about to take a test that she hadn't studied long enough for. Let's just do a little longer. Let's just work a little longer, she said. Are you almost done with the name tags? Megan showed Jesse the 12 jury name tags, the five witness name tags, and the judge's name tag. Those are good, said Jesse. Now you just have to do the ones for the audience. Megan groaned. This is why Evan calls you Obsessy Jesse. Jessie hated that nickname. She hated all the nicknames. Why had Evan told Megan about that? I'm not obsessed. I just work hard. It's called do, she thought for a minute, but she couldn't come up with the name something. She scrounged under the papers that were scattered on the floor and found trial by jury, the booklet her mother had written. She started flipping through the pages. But we've been doing this for hours, wailed Megan. I want to go outside. Due diligence, said Jessie. That's what it's called, doing your job so that later no one can blame you and say that you didn't work hard enough. Well, due diligence is boring, said Megan. She picked up the ruler that Jessie had been using to draw straight lines on her map and began to balance it upright in the palm of her hand. She was pretty good at it. Jessie was impressed. Suddenly, Megan said, do you think you can really prove that Scott stole Evan's money? Jessie felt her throat close up for an instant. That was a question she was almost afraid of. That was the question that kept running through her mind last night as she lay in bed trying to fall asleep. I don't know. I better be able to. Jessie imagined standing up in front of the whole class and apologizing to Scott. It made her feel like throwing up. Megan put her ruler down and flopped onto the floor, spreading her arms and legs out like a starfish. She picked up the map Jessie had drawn to show where everyone would be in the courtroom. The courtroom wasn't a room at all. It was the grassy part of the school playground. The part that was farthest away from the building and the blacktop and was shaded by a row of large elm trees. Jessie had drawn exactly where they would set up the milk crates and the jump ropes and the balls and who would sit where. Everybody's name was marked with some kind of a symbol. Megan stared at the map. It's like I can almost imagine the whole thing happening, she said. There's just one thing. She turned the paper one way and then the other. It's not symmetrical, see? Jessie looked at the map. What was Megan talking about? It's supposed to be balanced, right? Everything even. But look, Megan put the pencil out of, pulled the pencil out of her ponytail and drew a light dotted line down the middle of Jessie's drawing. So here's Jessie's drawing of the map. And there's the line 
random symmetry. Scott doesn't have a lawyer, she said. The sides aren't even, so it's really not, you know, fair. I mean, to Scott. Well, it's his own fault, said Jessie. She worked too hard on her map to hear any criticism of it. But still, said Megan, isn't it the law that everyone gets to have a lawyer if they get arrested? Even if you're poor and even if no one likes you, I and mean, even if everyone thinks you're guilty, you get to have a lawyer. That's how they always do it on TV. Jesse shrugged. He wants to defend himself. You're allowed to do that in real court. Megan shook her head. He only said that because there was no one left to pick. I mean, no boys. She looked at the map again. It just doesn't seem right. What are you saying? Jesse wished people would just be clear about what they meant. Are you saying I'm wrong? Megan crossed her arms. All I'm saying is that it isn't fair if Evan has a lawyer and Scott doesn't. And you know it, Jesse. You know it better than anyone else. You're the queen of fair. Another nickname. Was it an insult? The way Megan said the queen of fair didn't sound like an insult. But Jesse wasn't sure. Sometimes someone said one way, someone said something one way and meant it exactly the opposite. That was called sarcasm. And Jessie always missed it, like a pitch thrown too fast, leaving her swinging at nothing in the air, at nothing but the air. Outside, Jessie could hear the steady bouncing of a basketball in the driveway. Evan, shooting hoops. Did he know how hard she was working? For him? Then the bouncing stopped, and she heard a car pull into the driveway. Megan heard it too. That's my mom, she said. Gotta go. Megan had a dentist appointment at four o'clock. For the first time ever, Jessie was glad to see Megan go. Okay, and that's the end of chapter seven. I'll be back with chapter eight tomorrow. Bye, guys.